Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Nick from NickWilt.com and in today's video I'm going to bring you guys another exciting Adobe Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create a nice little grungy cartoon image that you're seeing right here. And we're actually going to take a photograph and transform it into what you're seeing right in front of you right now. Now this is actually part two of a two-part video series. The first part, which I will link in the video's description down below, is going to be a more in-depth look at using the image trace functionality within Adobe Illustrator and we're actually going to be using that technique along with a couple of other Photoshop techniques to take a photograph and transform it into what you're seeing right in front of you right now. And just to give you a little insight as to what we're going to be doing, as you can see right here, this is the original photograph that we have to work with and we're going to end up transforming it into this right here. And we're going to be doing that through a step-by-step -step process. So step number one would would uh, end up looking something like this, a nice little cartoon image. Step number two would end up changing the colors and making it look like this. And then step number three would be polishing it and getting it to look like the final image right here. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and jump into Adobe Illustrator and get started. So we're actually going to start this off not within Photoshop, but within Illustrator. And in order to do that, I'm going to take my little image that I have right here, which I'm simply calling Demo Image. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna open it up within Adobe Illustrator CS6. You can use any version of Adobe Illustrator, I think CS5 and upwards into Creative Cloud. CS6 just happens to be the version that I own. And so we're gonna take that image and as soon as it loads, we're going to use the image trace tool to transform the image into a cartoon. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom out, I'm going to select the image, and I'm actually gonna resize it to be quite a bit smaller because the document that I have selected here in Illustrator is exactly the same size as the photograph that we have here. And I did that simply by choosing File, New, and then I inputted the exact dimensions of the photograph. So as you can see, it's quite a large image. And since I'm actually screencasting right now, transforming it into a cartoon using the vector graphics setting or the image trace tool would take a lot out of my system if I was to do it within the full resolution. So we're gonna shrink the image down right here. I'm gonna click on it and I'm going to go up to object and rasterize and that'll actually allow the image to work a little bit faster within Illustrator and so, a little frozen right here so we just got to uh, wait for the spinning beach ball of death to get back so now we're going to select on the image I'm going to go to the image trace option up here and I'm going to select the 16 color preset I'm going to click OK and then we have to wait for the nice little bar to work its magic and it's going to transform our photograph into a cartoon vector graphic with 16 different colors throughout the image so I'm going to wait for it to process and I'll get back to you in just a minute all right, and so now it's completely done transforming our image into a cartoon, and I actually took the liberty of rescaling it up to fit the entire artboard, and that actually took a couple of minutes just like it did to process the image, so I figured I'd cut that out and save us some time. So now we have the image right over here. This is a cartoon or vector graphic version of the original photograph that we have. Now, in order to bring it into Photoshop and edit it, I'm actually gonna do a couple of different changes to it. I'm going to select it, and I'm going to click Expand, and doing that, will transform it into a whole bunch of different paths which will allow me to select individual parts of the image. Now I'm going to right click it and I'm going to ungroup the path and what that'll do is that will allow me to select individual parts of the photo or individual parts of the image and we're going to transform it. So as you can see down here this is something I did in the image trace tutorial video. I don't like the letters that are on this sign right here that are kind of cut off from the rest of the image. So we're actually just going to select those and we're going to change them to the color of the, if I can select that one, we're going to change them to the color of the sign using the eyedropper tool. And then I'm going to change the color of the sky to kind of a different blue color because I don't like the way that the uh, white sky was actually, actually blown out during that. So that looks like a good color. I'm just going to select the sky right here and we're gonna change it to that kind of blue. I actually don't really like that kind of blue. We'll kind of change it to another darker blue. Uh, let's see if we can make it down a little bit lower like that. Yeah, that works. I like that. So we're going to delete this little rectangle. And now that we have everything that we need, we're going to take this image and we're going to export it to a PNG file. And then we're going to take that PNG file and import it into Photoshop. So I'm just gonna click on export. 
and once it brings up the export window I will export it to the desktop as demo image. I'm going to click on export, click OK and once it finishes writing the PNG file we can close out of Illustrator and then we can open it up within Adobe Photoshop and I'll be back in a second once it's finished. Alright and now it's finished so I'm just going to take it and I'm going to drag it into Adobe Photoshop and once it loads, as you can tell I have a very slow computer, it's not used to processing all of these images and recording the screen at the same time. But anyway, now that we have the image open up right here, I'm just going to rename the layer to OG, which will, trans which will just signify that this was the original image. I'm actually going to resize it just a little bit so that we don't have any white bits of the image clipping off of the edge. And uh, that'll do. And now I'll just probably align it to the center. And the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an adjustment layer for the levels. And we're actually going to add a little bit of detail into it. We don't have a lot of detail in the shadows, as you can see right here. And I'm going to add in a little bit of detail into the highlights. We're going to make it look like that. I think I might also add in a curves adjustment layer to make it look a little bit lighter up there. Uh, a little bit like that. We're essentially just going to play with the contrast and the exposure. Next I'm going to add a new group and I'm going to name this just as the OG image. Short for original image. And I'm going to take the original photo as well as those adjustment layers and place them into that right there. Now, in order to make it look like we did with the last previous image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a couple of texture files. So right here I have a couple of different grungy type textures that I downloaded off of deviantart.com. I'll post a link in the video's description to every single one of these textures that I'm going to be using so that you can download them and use them for yourself. So I think I'm going to import this old postcard right here. We're going to import that into the image. I'm actually going to resize it quite a bit. And it doesn't need to be perfectly unpixelated or anything. We're going to be using it just as a nice little backdrop. And then I'm going to change the blending mode from normal to multiply. And then it looks exactly like that when we place it over the image. I'm actually going to dumb down the opacity just a little bit to something along the lines of that. And then I'm going to probably drag in another texture file. So I'm going to do that. I think I'll grab in this one. This one looks pretty neat. We'll put that in there. We'll rotate it to the side and resize it. I might actually just resize it to fit the entire the entire workspace. Yeah, that looks like it might be cool. We'll click on multiply. And I'll probably reduce the fill as well as the opacity. And then it makes it kind of look like that. Now that looks pretty pretty neat. Now let's see if I can try and add in maybe one more texture. I think one of these might be pretty cool. I might use this one. And we'll see what we can get out of that. I'll make it incredibly large. Place it like that. Change the blending mode to multiply. I don't actually like how it does how it does that. I think we might place it in the corner up there. I'll dumb down the opacity just a little bit. And the one thing I don't like is that it actually has the sharp edge that's right there. So I might actually hide that using a layer mask. So I'm going to grab my nice little brush tool. I'll grab this. I will uh, change change it to, oops, it's not what I need to do. I'll change the color. I'll kind of hide the edge of that so that it's not showing a nice sharp edge. And I will change the opacity of it to mainly look like this. Okay, and there we go. We added a nice little grungy texture. Now I'm also going to put that in a group. I'm going to change that to textures. And then I'm going to put all of the textures within the group. And then I'll probably add in another levels adjustment. I might put it above textures too. Not in textures, above textures. <laughs> yep, I'm going to add in a nice little levels adjustment to make it look nice and nice and bright something along the lines of that now that looks pretty cool and now I'll probably just group these all together again and I'll make this to image and that will include the original image the I didn't need to do that the original image the textures and 
the levels adjustment and we're going to put those into the image and now we're going to do the we're going to uh, basically select an adjustment layer for the entire thing and we're going to mess around with the colors so i think i'm going to do a color balance one and i'm going to just change the colors around to something like this maybe put in the magentas the blues okay that looks good i'll probably add in some hue and saturation for the master we're going to shift the entire thing more towards the red. I will saturize it just a little bit and bring the lightness down in order to bring in some more some more contrast. We'll probably do it along the lines of that. I'm going to change the reds and I'm going to make the reds incredibly red. Saturize it just a little bit more. Maybe put the lightness to around... Let's do minus four and for the yellows we'll probably do something similar we'll actually make the yellows stand out a little bit more that looks pretty cool maybe not saturize them too much but still add in, add in a little bit of saturation and i do want them to be kind of light so we'll do it about that we'll do the same thing for the greens we're just going to have to look around the image and see what we like that's a little bit too saturized Probably just leave them in like that. Not too many greens to work around with. Now there's going to be a lot of cyan to work with. So we're going to make that a little bit like that. Saturize it just a little bit more. And I'll bring the lightness to around plus eight. We're going to do the same thing for the blues. We'll make the blues about like that. Saturize them quite a bit. And we'll actually not really mess with the lightness too much. And for the magentas, there's probably not that much magenta in the shot in the first place. So we'll leave it to around that. And this color balance layer, along with this hue saturation layer, actually did a lot for the image. So this is what the image looked like beforehand. And now once we add in our color adjustments, as you can see, it actually did a lot with bringing out the image. And so we're just going to add another group. We'll call this color adjustments. That's going to be for the color adjustment layers. And now there's going to be one more thing that I want to add. I want to add an exposure layer right here. Now this is going to mess around with the exposure. I'm actually going to up it up just a little bit and I'm going to mess with the gamma and the offset. And what this will do is this will create a lot of contrast that will go with it. And we're actually going to take this and we're going to apply it to the entire thing. So I'm going to make another group and I'm going to make this... Uh, final and we're going to import the image and the color group into the final group I'm actually going to duplicate the group and then I'm going to take that duplicate and I'm going to merge it into one specific layer so that way we're not messing around with all the individual layers we're messing with just one layer I'm gonna take this exposure one I'm gonna create a clipping mask on it and then I'm gonna create another group and we're going to make this uh, contrast because this exposure layer that we made is going to add in a lot of contrast to the image. I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to put them into their own little contrast group. And once again, I'm going to duplicate the group, merge the group into its own layer. We're going to just keep it as called contrast copy for right now. I'll drag it underneath of that and I'll set the blending mode to overlay. And then we're going to drop down the opacity of it and as you can see if we have it on it looks like this if we have it off it looks like that and it just adds in a whole bunch of contrast and I'll probably reduce the fill just a little bit so this would be the original image and this would be it with the added additional contrast so I'm actually going to take the contrast layer still going to keep it hidden but I'm going to put it into the final group and then with this contrast copy I'm actually going to duplicate it just so that we don't mess it up I'll probably hide the original. And now with this, I'm actually going to go up to Filter, Sharpen, and I'm going to use Smart Sharpen to actually add in some sharpening to it. And we're gonna use that to kind of give it some oomph and make it stand out from the rest of the cartoon. So this is what the final result would look like. If I uncheck the preview button, as you can see, it actually needs quite a bit more sharpening. I'll do that. I'll increase the radius just a little bit. 
and that looks a lot better. So if I uncheck the preview box, this is what it looked like before. Now this is what it looks like with a whole bunch more sharpening on it. I'm going to click OK, and then there we go. There is our final image. So if I uncheck that, this is what it would look like without the gamma whatsoever, and this is what it look, would look like with it. And that is the final image that we have right there. Now, this isn't exactly the way that I would do it for every single image. These are kind of just guidelines that I did for this particular image, but I wanted to give you guys a nice little tutorial and show you exactly how I did things in order to get from that original photograph to the final result that you see right here. So that's essentially it for the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys take these techniques and imply them into your own different photos and different artworks in order to get a cool result. If you have a nice result that you got using the techniques showed in today's video, I'd love to see it. Feel free to send them in the comment section below or send them to me on Twitter. But essentially that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.